Hey guys, welcome to the Octopod. Yes, that's Octopod with two Ds. Why? Because in life, double Ds makes things much, much better. I'm Curtis, I'm the loud one, and this is Chris, he is the fat one. Uh, that's exactly what it is, baby. Uh, if you hear anything in the background of this podcast, it's just Adwin. He had another... Um, asthma attack? Asthma attack, so you might hear some kind of like frog-like sounds. Or a goose honk. Or a goose honk. Uh, that's just Adwin, there's nothing we could do about it. Um, he's got to just power through it and recover. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just leave him elsewhere? Uh, we really can't. He's very codependent, and we need to have him around, or else he'll be very... Uh, stressed. And stress stressed and anxious. Stress makes what he has worse. Yeah, so he's here. If you hear any sounds, that's just it. And also, another disclaimer, all right, guys? Yeah, big news. Big news. This is the final podcast. Yay! For now. We'll uh, just, we'll, you know what we'll call it? Season 1. We'll call it Season 1. Uh, will yeah. we ever bring it back? Who knows? Uh, we we want to change it up to something else, and like, we're not too clear what that idea is yet. So we're gonna put on indefinite hiatus. Yeah, more than anything, uh, we want to go back to having our full length discussions at the end of the movies. There was a YouTube, uh, there was a comment in one of our podcasts where a guy said he really liked when we did it then because it was more fresh in our minds. The movies, and, and I you agree. know what, I strong agree with the guy. All right, yeah. it was perfect criticism, and we're taking it seriously, and we just feel like it's better to just leave the long discussions at the end of the movie when it's fresh yep. rather than do a podcast and we've seen other movies and now we're coming back to this we're trying to like remember what we just saw essentially yeah and i feel like it's just we watch so many movies that i'm gonna be honest like sometimes i i struggle with to remember everything yeah we watch a lot of movies and it does get hard to remember when we get to the podcast and yeah. i think that's a little unfair to you guys you know, we want to give you a proper discussion or a proper thoughts on the film as a whole. Yeah, so movies after this, we've already started bring, bringing it back at the end. Yes. So you're getting the full reviews at the end. And um, again, like we said, we're going to probably just stop the podcast for a while. We're not sure how long. We uh, would like to bring it back if we have a better idea of what we want to do with it. Right now, we don't really know what to do outside of... Um, we had it for those reviews, and now we're realizing not a good without idea. The, without the, the full-length discussions or the reviews of the films... We're not sure what to talk about. We're not sure wh wh what direction to bring this into. If you want, in the comments down below, maybe give us ideas. If you want, uh, if you would like us to revitalize this or kind of like, uh, kind of revamp it or give it some kind of like a different form of life yeah. that you would be more interested in, you know, it, that would be great. That would be very helpful for us. We're open to any ideas. And if you don't care and you want to see it be destroyed, then don't say anything at all. Maybe. Just wish for its timely demise. Yeah, and maybe call us idiots or something. You know, you could do that too. Yeah, we're trying there. We're just having fun trying some new things. Our next project, we already have it done. We already have our next project ready. Uh, we're super excited for it, and uh, we are not going to tell you what it is yet until we're... Nope. A little hint, it's going to be another channel. It's we're... another It's another YouTube channel. The content will not be on here. And the content's just going to be as... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? It's going to be just as uh, mediocre in terms of... Uh... <laughs> It's going to be another reaction channel. Woo! Wow. What are we reacting to? I don't know. Who knows, guys? But it's going to be something a little bit more different. And we're super excited for it because we're actually more passionate in this. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking forward to giving you the guys that. When's it coming out? We don't know yet. No. There's a, quite a bit of planning we want to do uh, before we, really, you know. We have to prepare the whole channel and everything. Yeah, before we launch the it's channel a lot, stuff. It's a lot of work. Yeah, we, we want to just prepare it and stuff like that. And, get and we're going to be editing the videos for it as well. So uh, yeah, we got to so, prepare to schedule our, our lives around editing again. Yeah. So look forward to that. Uh, it's going to be fun. You'll know about it as soon as we do it because we'll probably be shilling it in every opening that we do for every movie for a, a while. Just yep. to get you guys over there, you know. Hey. hey. That's how we're going to do it. So, yeah, that's going to be really fun. Um, I think that's it in terms of... Uh, what's going on with the uh, the podcasts and everything else. Uh, I think we're just going to move on to the movies. I would say, hey, guys, leave us some comments and stuff like that or highlights but or questions, but it doesn't really matter anymore. So just leave us a message of, like, a funeral message, like rest in peace and RIP. Yeah, if you want. Uh, leave us some kind of memorial down below. We would appreciate that. I, that would be really cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to move on to the movies that we're talking to uh, talking about this week, which is uh, Godzilla minus one. <laughs> I'm and excited. Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire. Yeah, baby. So what's very funny about that is, uh, well, this is uh, I edit both these uh, films. Copyright was hitting our editor Eduardo so hard. Yeah. And like, not his fault either. No, it's not, not his at all. Fault Curtis, whatsoever. Curtis is like a wizard. He has a whole technique that he has. That is a sure proof way to get through copyright. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I wasn't doing the reaction videos with Chris, I would be working full time as an editor because every one of those guys, um, every one of those uh, reactor guys would love to have me. I get through uh, copyright 
just like that yeah. easily every single time. Yep. The only problem is I hate editing. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> so. and, and the only reason he's become good is it, it's trial of error when we first started oh, out doing yeah. it ourselves. Oh. When you just start out, like you really have to, I don't know, exploit everything you can to get through. Yeah. And it's just like a, it, I don't know, it's a product it's of... It's just like uh, anything else you do in life. If you want to get better at it, you have to literally just beat your head against the wall and learn. And try new things. That's it. Try new things. Really figure it out. And that's what I did. I figured it out and I... One I, shot, one kill. Godzilla minus one was boom. Nailed the first shot. No copyright. So you guys are going to pretty much enjoy that. Uh, as, soon, as we're filming this, Godzilla X Kong... I'm at the very end of editing it. I'm yeah. at the final fight scene of editing it. Yeah. Uh, and, and fun point, Godzilla Minus One comes out today as we are recording this. Yeah, which is kind of funny. I'm so excited. So yeah, Ooh. we're going to talk about Godzilla Minus One. We're going to begin with this film uh, first. Right now. Uh, yeah. This movie's incredible. Peak Godzilla. Peak Godzilla. It's so goddamn good. I they need. I, I wish they would just make uh, more Godzilla films, kind of like with this uh, style. Well, it's because, like, a lot of Godzilla films, like, from the original that came out, I think, in the 50s, if I'm correct. Yeah. Godzilla dropped, and it was a horror film. It was categorized as horror. And I yeah. feel like over the years, Godzilla became more action-orientated, more like, oh, big monsters fight. And it kind of lost an essence of horror. Yeah. And Godzilla Minus One brings back that horror entirely yeah godzilla minus one really brings godzilla back to its roots yeah right where it started exactly it, feels, it makes godzilla as a whole a terrifying monster and you feel it too mm -hmm. just the the destruction and how it's presented Dude, on screen the is way it's incredible just as heat ray breath blast shit the way that thing hits and then does an atomic blast yeah I'm, oh my god like dude I'm, it's like 10 like let alone a laser the blast afterwards is so yeah. devastating. I'm going to be real with you. Uh, when it comes to the, 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 the heat ray from Godzilla's mouth, I prefer how it's presented in minus one in comparison to when it's just like a laser cutting things down. I kind of like the boom and then the delay of bang and the sheer destruction, like the wind pressure and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, it, when it's just like tearing the city apart. Uh, Ginya, I think it was called. Ginza. 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 Like Ginza, Ginza I think so. Why is it Ginya? I was thinking of the Ginyu Force for some reason. <laughs> the Ginyu Force? I don't know why Ginyu Force I think it's came Ginza. Mind. Something like that. Ginya, Ginza, something like that. It's I, a G. Uh, uh, it starts with a G. And, but just like when that city's being destroyed, that's Pete Godzilla right there. You know, when he has like the, 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 the train in his mouth and stuff like that. And Noriko's like hanging off of it and stuff. It just looks really good. Oh my god! And again with Godzilla, is that I like that Godzilla is feels more traditional, very slow. You know, he's taking his he doesn't time. Doesn't have There's, to be fast. No, he doesn't have to rush anything. It's like he's stepping on an anthill. It's yes. nothing to him like, to go through this place. There's like nothing to fear. No, he he is the top of the food chain and walks as such. Yeah, and it's just like literally, there's such an aura about Godzilla in this film that is just menacing yep. and i love it so much yep he, he literally walks like a god amongst man yeah just just god of destruction just, blowing the shit out of anything in his path yeah you never see godzilla ever break a sweat in terms of needing to move around just no. literally just boom but it's interesting because when he was boom. younger on the island he was quicker well i mean he was smaller yeah, right? yeah of course but it's just i like that like he had this more prehistoric like look to I him i kind of like how we got to see godzilla before the radiation yeah and then after he grew yeah when he when evolved he got, into when he, this when godzilla beast. took the juice <laughs> Ah, the radiation juice. Oh. Dude, that's when shit started to go down, man. Godzilla yeah. became a behemoth. And yeah. Godzilla looked a lot more terrifying in this one. Yes. Especially, like, the look in the eyes, you know? Or even the way Godzilla would swim and you see its head pop out of the water. Oh, yeah. And, ooh, that was kind of cool. As, uh, when, when they're on the... When they're on the... The boat? The, the mind-sweeping boat. Yeah. And Dude, it reminded, me of, for the first time. it reminded me of Jaws for some reason. 100%. I, it gave I was me totally... Jaws I was vibes. thinking of Jaws the whole time. Yeah, I was thinking of the line, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. <laughs> and then the bigger boat came and got its ass destroyed. Bro, the way he obliterated the boat, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, when he destroyed the big boat for the first time, when he shoots the laser from underneath... Yeah. <laughs> what I find the most I got so excited. What I find the most fascinating is the time period in which they decided to like base this whole film in. Oh, straight after World War. After One, I think it was World War Two. World War Two. Sorry. You know, Japan lost. They got, you know, Nagasaki, Hiroshima got boomed. You know, honestly, like Japan took a huge blow there. Yeah. You know, and then it's just like hold up, but what if Godzilla came in afterwards? But imagine that. You know, you already lost so much. And now here comes an atomic monster that literally can cause the same destruction with ease on his own, and it's a natural creature. Yeah. 
You know, this isn't Mad May. This isn't randomly. This thing's just coming out and having fun and blowing the shit out of everything. Yeah. It's just like th that contrast. It's of just already like, going through this massive disaster. This massive like horrible. You're not given enough time to recover. No. It's just like here's another threat. Here's another yeah. problem. Yeah. You know, it, it's just like it's crazy to see just like them having to deal with this situation. Yeah. Like following right after. Yeah. You know, it's just oh my god. I really like that the time period it took place in. I, I really it, found that interesting. It's very smart. Uh, I also I want to talk about uh, Koichi, uh, the, the protagonist for this. Fantastic, a phenomenal character. Fantastic. Uh, the actor was so goddamn good. So many good moments from that actor, especially when like uh, the first instance where Noriko gets blasted away, and you think yeah, when, she got obliterated. Yeah, when he blasts the shit out of Ginza, and then like you just see him screaming. Yeah, he's like, just like absolutely like he's absolutely just he's. Angry. He, he he's broke. Sad. He's like he's having a mental breakdown. He can't even comprehend what's going on anymore. Yeah. You know, it's an incredible scene. That one was really good. Or even the scene where he's like, "Oh, I must already be dead." You and Akiko are an illusion. You know, and he's just like losing yeah. his mind inside it's, of his house. It's because of the PTSD. It's not the, like that. the guilt of being the only one who survived. Not only that, but also the guilt that he did not complete his task as a kamikaze pilot. Well, he actually. It, here's the thing. He actually. That there is that instance he did not complete his uh, mission of, as a kamikaze pilot yeah. and he didn't even shoot at Godzilla when they needed him for help yeah. there's two instances where he did not help at all yeah he didn't know? he didn't do anything to, uh, that he was supposed to order no. to, uh, to help out anybody he was, he was terrified he was afraid he wanted to live yeah. more than actually like um uh, do his do or uh, serve his duty or or something like that I, yeah. I don't know what the right terminology is. I, I like that contrast is throughout the the entire film you see that regret leads him to lose that fear. Not even that. Not only does he have regret, but he also has a lot to fight for. Yeah. You know, he has Akiko, he has Noriko, and he wants them to, he wants Japan, he wants there to be a Japan. Yeah. Right? And with Godzilla stomping around, there's not going to be much of Japan. Mm -hmm. So he realizes that there's something bigger than himself. Yeah. And that's where the self-sacrificing ideology comes from. Because he realizes that there's more things that are, I, there are things that are more important than myself. Yeah. Than my life. While previously he didn't have that. He only wanted to get home to his parents. Yeah. Which he lost. Yeah. You know? And like, knowing that your, your, even his mother gave him a letter that said like, you know, please come home alive. Yeah. And then like, in contrast of what you actually have to do, like, you're literally killing yourself. Yes. Like that that's the crazy thing and like, and that's why you couldn't commit to it and stuff. Like it was just again, like that's crazy that that's your job. Hey, get in that plane and go boom boom. Like that's wild. Yeah, man. That it, is, it was a thing, dude. It was a thing that happened unfortunately. I know. You know? Yeah, dude, you, when you see the the horrible things people were put to do through history, they were forced into doing. Yeah. A lot of there is a lot of oh. especially there's a lot of messed up things in World War 2. Oh like yeah, a lot of crazy things. That, yeah, I feel like if you go down that rabbit hole, you're gonna find a lot of like yeah. sick and disgusting. Well, things it's like that even with Japan, like even with Japan, like why they dropped the bombs and stuff. Japan was doing a lot of really like human testing, like really horrific stuff. Oh, well, that was was that the actual? There is a reason thing? why they hit Japan with the bombs. It's not because oh we're just gonna throw them out. Like hey, no, there was a, there, there was a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things that a lot of people don't really know the specifics. Of what really went down, and Japan doesn't even want to talk about. It. They will never acknowledge it because, like, why? You don't want to. It was not a pretty thing. It's like even you go to Germany when it comes to like anything of Nazism. Like, it's so like, no, you cannot talk about it's this. Kind of none like of they this. They understand their past was terrible. They understand they did bad things. They want to move on from it. Yeah, they move forward and completely. Like, pretty they, much, it's like that's not who we are now. No, we understand that what we did back then was kind of uh, everyone did crazy horrible well, there, shit. There was a lot of skeptical things going on there. A lot yeah. of people were doing some weird things during World War Two. It was a crazy time. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah. We're yeah. trying to move on from that. Yeah, mistakes were made. A lot of... All over the board. Oh, my God. All over the board. Everyone... I guarantee you there was mistakes all across the board with a whole bunch of individuals. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I really just... Um, the movie just reminded me again, like, why I like big monster films, you know? Hmm. And it's not like... Don't get me wrong. I love, like, we're going to talk about it after Godzilla X Kong. I love watching these big monsters fight. But I also just love seeing, like, these underdogs of humanity having to take on this creature that is just so, like, again, like a god, like a god it, in it's itself. It's kind of like, like it's... humanity is the underdog. Yeah. 
you know, you know, and, and they have to fight a living, essentially a living god. You know, yeah. it's man versus god, essentially. It's a very cool uh, story. It's a very cool yeah. like, archetype in, t in terms of storytelling. I, I like also like. I love the idea that the scientist came up with. I can't remember his name. Sorry. But the idea that he came up with to take out Godzilla was fascinating. To, to compress Sinking him, him and then decompress him. Kind yeah, of thing. dude, using the pressure of the. Uh, I was, was like, oh, oh my yeah. god, that's like that was really fascinating. Yeah, that was I, really cool. Like I was really impressed by that I, kind of like idea. I, I kind of think it's interesting. Usually, you know, in Godzilla films, it's like, oh, monster versus monster. That's like how we defeat the monster with another monster. Yeah, but it's kind of cool to see like a. Uh, humans using like uh they're actually like smarts you know being smart and actually devising a plan to well, beat this creature it's because in most like monster films it'd be like oh let's make this big weapon it's like oh no we're gonna use this the nat like the natural source of like of pressure within the ocean yeah like it was just really scientific really smart and different i was like oh wow i love this idea you yeah. know and, and the oh god it was just cool that, that really impressed me so much they didn't just go cookie cutter brain dead like oh we make bigger weapon boom boom bow Pretty much, I was r really, uh, again, it was just really good. Yeah, and I'm also surprised that by the end of the film, Noriko lived. That blew my mind. Because I, I thought, like, this was just going to be depressing as hell. I didn't expect him to actually, like... Well, not just, uh... Yeah, that actually did take me off guard. I to, She to, looked really dead. To be fair, like, she was just blasted by, like, wind pressure. Sure, that's really... I could see possibly you're getting injured. You're just stuck. You can't move. It's gonna take a while before How, people to find man, you. Man, I feel like with that wind pressure, if you go flying, you hit something. Man, like oh my dude, gosh. the human body's resilient as hell. I know, but still, I was just like, oh. that's why it was very like hard for me to believe. I was just like, wow, really? Yeah, she you were that? you were quick to accept. Okay, she's dead. Right, straight up. Yeah, you know, like straight up. Uh, I was very uh. Yeah, I was uh, very quick to accept she was dead. Yep. Uh, not even that, but apparently she has like this weird like black ooze thing or something. I saw like that. that. So I don't know what. Like clearly they're setting up a sequel with that going on, and the fact that Godzilla didn't actually die due to regenerative abilities. Maybe are, she's like, gonna have like a connection with Godzilla, like kind of like understand he, when he's actually coming and maybe stuff. Maybe something. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm kind of interested. If to they see where if that... they do, they don't have to make a sequel. I actually prefer if they didn't. I already. I think I saw I, the director has already planned his next sequel. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, exactly. Not no. sequel. I mean the director's planned his next film. But the thing is. I wouldn't mind if they do a sequel as long as it was planned. And it seems like it was planned based on how they ended the film, They right? put a little foreshadow to something that could potentially yeah, come I don't from mind. It. As long as there was plans for a sequel straight off the bat, go ahead, you know, start cooking. You already cooked. Yeah. You know, just, you gave me uh, what potentially could have been the appetizer. Don't give me the main course. You know yeah. what I mean? And, I'm more, and I also liked um, the character that was the, uh, the engineer. Uh, what they, was his name? I can't remember. I think it started with a... Uh, T maybe was it a T? Again, proves the point. Like it's so long that since we've seen the movie that sometimes it's hard to remember. I feel like this is the, I feel like this is where it becomes into play. Where it's yeah. just like I wish. Uh, I wish I knew. But I knew he was the engineer that you know was the only other survivor on the island with him in the beginning. Yeah, I kind of loved how, how he, Koichi went back to go and get him. He was and I like, like how he pulled him out by like kind of. Um, in a sense, gaslighting him. Blamed him for the death of all the people on the island. And pissed him off to get him out, yeah, which was clever. Tactic. But what I like about it a lot is just, like, I like because, like, Engineer Bro is just like, I ain't gonna do this for you. You know, screw you, you're a piece of shit. I ain't doing this. No. I like what Koichi just tells him, our war isn't over. Yeah. Oh, that line goes so hard. My mm -hmm. war's not over. And then he tells him, reiterates it to him, because they're the two last living members of that island. Yeah. And they have... They have a responsibility in destroying this monster, yeah. the two of them. And it's just, it's crazy. It's just, let's finish what what we started kind yeah. of deal. And I like how he straight ah, up tells them, like, you know, he puts the ejection in there. It's like, you're living this. You're you're not getting the sacrifice. You're not getting the self-sacrifice. Like, you're not getting what you want here. Yeah. It's like, you're coming home, you're coming back. Yeah. And I really like that as well. It was really cool. And I didn't even expect it. I, I thought it might be something like, you might put it like a surprise with the button that when he pulls it, it launches him. Like, a, like it would have like um, been out of uh, unintentionally or like um, the trick him in a sense. Okay. But then I realized, oh, no, he really just put that in there. No, it was the obvious because yeah, yeah. he was just like, hey, I got a surprise for you. And I knew it was that because especially with, like, engineering's come a long way. So yeah. Since, uh, it's been years, since right? It, it's been years since Godzilla first attack. So I guarantee you, like, he probably uh, studied or picked up a few things on putting an ejection suit and whatnot. Yeah. So it was just cool that they did that as well. Um, again, I, I kind of like uh, Godzilla. Oh, what I like about Godzilla Minus One is that it feels like a character piece at the same time as a monster film, which yeah. is interesting. I feel like you could have taken Godzilla out of the film and it still would have been a good movie. That's what I believed. I think that like that's what they did. They made a great story that could have been told without Godzilla. Yep. It was it was just it was a great idea. Uh, Koichi is a, a, a phenomenal protagonist, and the one thing about Godzilla Minus One that makes it great is that the humans aren't boring. 
no. this is where we're going to segue into the next film, guys. Yeah. Uh, the humans in Godzilla Minus One are very entertaining, and they are the uh, kind of like what shines the brightest, surprisingly, in a monster film. I, I was completely okay with watching like how Koichi struggle and stuff like that, yeah. and kind of like how he develops as a character. Because he's so flawed as well, and that's the beauty of it. He's a flawed yes. character. And who those... perseveres through his flaws and develops into like really from a man who was scared of death becomes brave enough to sacrifice, sacrifice himself. himself. It's it's very interesting coming to see full that. circle that he couldn't do the kamikaze, but he was willing to go all he, in and kill himself or get Godzilla. That was like he gained the courage to do something. Not even that, but he gained the courage to even fight Godzilla in the in the fighter plane. Yeah. He's like maneuvering around him, shooting him, luring him, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He was courageous. He was the fear was gone yeah. at that moment. Yeah. You know, it's just it's incredible to see a character develop to that extent. Yeah. And again, that's where the contrast like, that's where things are very different with Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. But let's be you know why? For Godzilla minus one, Godzilla is the foundation. But what really is like the filler of it all, like the meat and the potatoes dude, is just all the characters in that Yes. It, it, it really just, like, Godzilla's just there to give us a purpose to the story, but the characters and everything just flesh it out perfectly and make it beautiful. Exactly that. And then, like and you then, said... And then, when you get, then you get the exact opposite with Godzilla x Kong the New Empire. Yeah, the, uh, human, the humans are, like, the foundation, oh, the, but the monsters are, like, everything you the want. The monsters are the most important thing about Godzilla x Kong. Um, when it comes to the human characters, they picked all the... They picked very good human characters to bring back. Like, um... Uh, uh, what's her name uh, at, at uh, Monarch I can't remember her name what do you mean uh, the scientist chick the main one with her daughter who oh yeah does I only know her daughter's name's Gia because I, I was like really yeah, simple Gia. I mean she just like the you know she, she can only sign and stuff like that and um, well, she communicates through sign language and uh brought back those two those were very good characters glad they did they brought back Bernie which was very smart because he was the best thing about um, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong he was the best human character, in my opinion, from that film. Be, I, the biggest Bernie problem... was very enjoyable, and I thought he was funny. But they kind of, like, took what I didn't like about Godzilla uh, versus Kong, and which was too many characters. I felt like there was too many perspectives, too but many characters. The thing, they condensed it and brought yeah. back characters that... The best parts of those films. Yeah, the, I, I like characters. that we got rid of... What was it? Uh, Bill, Billy... What was her name in there? I She's in Stranger Things. You know her? Like, I'm glad they got rid of her. I felt her character served her purpose in, like... Didn't need her no more. No, like, King of the Monsters would should have been it for her. I didn't feel like she had to be in the sequel. Yeah, it was a bit kind of like shoehorned in. Yeah. And it was just too many things happening, too many characters going on. Yeah. And I just it was really just exhausting. Yeah. And then we got uh, then we also got a new character, I think Trapper. He yeah. Was, he, I was perfectly fine with him. Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura meets PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the two of them, it's just the like two of them fused together. And <laughs> there you go. There's uh, Ace Ventura, PewDiePie. And uh, he was fine. I liked him a lot. I kind of liked what they did in terms of every time he had like a really cool scene, they added really, they added oh, music that dude. was really nice. The soundtrack in the film was like ten out of ten. Oh my god! They had a really good soundtrack, Woo. man. They had like I was made for loving you from Kiss at one point, where I was like, when he was like giving um, Kong like the new arm attachment, yep. which was very cool. Giving the Infinity Gauntlet. Giving the the Kong Infinity Gauntlet. That was a cool. Uh, I just I like that song a lot. Heard it from the Fall Guy. It's been stuck in my head ever since. Yeah, still is, which is crazy because we saw a movie like a month or two ago. Yeah, wild. Uh, but yeah, even though they brought back, uh, they, they introduced one new human character and they kept existing human characters, the, the best of them all. Yeah, it still wasn't enough. And you know what the thing yeah. is? I realized. So when we watched the movie and ended, it was like, wow, the humans weren't that bad in this movie. No, right in comparison. But when I was editing this movie. This is where my opinion changed, actually. Because I was, you know, when I'm editing, I'm trying to get the parts where we're talking the most, or we're interacting the most, or having the most fun. Yeah. And every time the humans were on screen, it just was... We weren't saying much. We were just paying attention, but we weren't really interacting or saying anything. You yeah. know? And I was just like, oh, the humans are still kind of boring, actually. Well, it's, it's like I said... In a movie where the highlights are monsters, it's hard for the humans to shine. Well, it's because they put more effort in the monsters, and they just have the... The humans are generally... They're just they're just devices to move the plot forwards. So. Yes. They're just the wheels, the monsters, or the cars. Yeah. You know? And it's just like... They're it's not... It's kind of unfortunate, but it's, it's again, it's really hard, because you know that they're pumping... All their uh, all their budget into the monster fights, into the monster interactions. Yeah. Right? You know, to the point where yeah. I was just like, it would have been better with 
less humans. No, I know, but like, I understand that the humans serve their purpose in terms of like, oh, you know, Gia brings uh, summons right. Mothra and stuff. No, like but that. you have to also realize like you can't just have a movie of giant monsters like with no real dialogue. Why not? Or happening. Why not? Hey, I I say that because like maybe like I think I think a director needs to get, like grow a pair, get brave. And actually, maybe do it. If you, here's the thing: if you're always gonna give us monster fights, or like you really want to focus on the monsters as a whole, just do it. Or if you want, like, for example, no, if you I have a good example okay. actually. Just let, let me go for it. Even like in this movie, some of the greatest parts was actually Kong interacting with the other apes. There was no dialogue whatsoever; just them communicating. Yeah. Through sign language, like, through sign language, or through like just actual Ape actions. Language. And it was interesting. Like, the whole time, you know, when um, the little monkey leads him to Scar and stuff like that, that's a big segment. There's no dialogue, but you're entertained. You yeah. don't need dialogue. And it made yeah. me realize, why don't they just commit to the monsters and just remove the humans at some point? I feel like they're just afraid to do it, and I can understand that. I get that. I, I mean, maybe again, they, it's a ballsy approach. Maybe they just don't know how to carry a film like that without dialogue or actors, and they're just like, they would get a little, like... I'm telling you, Godzilla, x Kong, New Empire, there were moments where he could have done it. I felt that the director yeah. could have done it. Like, I felt some moments where I just like, if you did more of this and you left out the humans. No, but it wasn't. But to be fair, there was more of that. Like, it, when it's clearly going in the right oh, direction. 100%. Because, like, the cast of characters, they shrunk it down significantly. And yes. thank God. The, that was such a godsend. The only time the humans, like, really served a purpose was in terms of, like, fighting the, the civilization. Yeah. Uh, bringing back Mothra and stuff like that. Like, they served their purpose in, the, yeah. in, the, in that kind of way. And I understand the importance in that. But it's just like, man, I, again, the, the monsters shine so bright that the humans feel a little lackluster all the time. And I don't blame the actors, the actresses, or the human characters as a whole. It's just hard to stand up against when monsters are fighting. No, I know how to do it, though. Hmm. Easy. you got to give a representative for humanity a, is a giant fighter. Ultraman, bro. Yeah. Oh, get me dude, Ultraman! Dude, honestly, I've been waiting for so long. Not just that, but Ultraman oh. would work very very well with legendary pictures and like how they're presenting Godzilla with like cool fighting and stuff like that bringing in Ultraman into the mix yeah. you could do some crazy things can you imagine and doing it, him doing like some actual martial arts no, against the monsters but honestly 100% that would make the human portions more exciting if Ultraman's a pivotal character something like Ultraman something where humanity has to fights with them uh, uh, yes you know I feel like if they wanted to do it you know, or like, even you, against I don't care but I think it would be fascinating you could as also hell. just go in like Pacific Rim it up or something like that well they you know? tried to with the Mecha Godzilla the whole being control thing and, and you know what I just didn't like that I kind of like the idea of Ultraman he's a guy who gets bigger and he fights you know yeah. like that's yeah. cool as shit yeah like actually fighting head to head with the monsters yeah. I feel like at some I, point I think they it, definitely need to bring something in like that, and I feel like it could make the movies far better. Dude, I'd be so excited. I love Ultraman, no, man. No, 100%. There's a new Ultraman on Netflix, a new movie animated. I heard about that. I'm yeah. I'm interested in it. I kind of want to watch it. I might check it out. I kind of want to watch it. I don't know if I'm going to watch it my own time, but... Well, we'll see what happens, but I, I am interested in it. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like that's how you actually make the humans more enjoyable and more fun. If they have a bigger impact on the monsters fighting. Yeah, put it, them into the battle now. Put them into the mix. Put them into the mix. I think that would be really Instead great. of always just the and side character yeah like, but like just narrating I or talking like, about the events i feel like that character whoever portrays as the ultraman equivalent or ultraman himself yeah would make more people invested in a human character yeah rather than just let's see monsters fight yeah it might give a little bit more depth yeah you know that would be more interesting that's what i personally think it desperately needs because like everything else in this film is 10 out of this 10 this film had a lot of monster fights you know and they're good too like oh my god the chore very good. the choreography very, of very, the fights very good like, was even, like sick godzilla versus the spider crab that was really cool just Ooh. blows it up with guts everywhere king kong takes a, a hyena or a warg and rips it in two and gets covered in the gut yeah King Kong dude, fighting apes. Dude, even Godzilla versus Tiamat. Godzilla versus Tiamat. And Ti Tiamat looked like the, the Mitsuzune, Mitsuzune or something from uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah. It looked very similar in that way. But anyways, it looked cool. And it was a quick fight, but it looked good. You no, know, Godzilla just like, Wah! heat ray and dices and slices and cooks them up. And dude, shit. It, was it was really sick. sick. And then he goes like, uh, he goes like pink. Yeah. Goes pink. It goes like Kyle Ken Godzilla. That was yeah. really sick. Was so really cool. cool. Uh, but even like, it was funny. Kong, what? Even the guy who did it, I saw that he said in an interview that he literally just got inspired by Kyle Ken. Oh yeah. Yeah, That's he sick. said it was an inspiration from uh, it. from Dragon Ball. You can see it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. You can it's, honestly, it's you can feel so it. sick. It's you. The pink works though. It actually looked. It was the like pink nice. Looks good on Godzilla. You yeah, know? It looked really cool, man. Uh, or even like uh, another great fight is like Kong against the Apes when he first interacts with them. Really cool fight. He takes the little guy and <laughs> beat the shit out of them. You know, and even we got the yapping ape. 
We got the yap. How could I forget the Bro, yapping? And he's, and he's going. Uh, 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 and he's like, dead, like uh. I that scene is ten out of ten. That's my favorite part of this film. I think the it's probably ape. one of the greatest like moments of cinema. Yeah, it's just it's absolutely hilarious. That ape I love getting so one much. shot killed with yeah. a punch to the head is crazy. Yeah. Funny. Even like Scar was a great villain. I like how he's like a a, a bone whip. And he's like a, a crystal that controls this giant ice monster. I didn't expect the ice monster, the, no. the ice dragon. That I was, was like, holy shit, that's kind of cool. sick. No, no, that also like cool. too, yeah. just the fact that he wasn't like big, but he had long limbs and was agile and he used that to his benefit. That was so cool. You, He wasn't like a, a Kong's size, but he was able to to like use his agility and stuff he was to kind, kind of, of like outmatch him. And yeah, it was really- He was kind of like, mm. he was the opposite of Kong in every way. You know, yep. not as muscular more lanky and you said more agile dexterous and stuff like that it was yeah. kind of cool to see like um kong who's more of a brute force against someone who's a more nimble and quick it was very interesting i really like know. that contrast very cool very cool but i love godzilla's idea of just brute forcing through everything yeah when i was editing the film and i saw like godzilla i was just like guys I, godzilla I just to, runs I, it I head to first say it, but like godzilla is cooler than king kong king kong is very like he, he's very um he's almost kind of like a little too human you know what I mean in terms of like how he interacts and stuff like that. He has like a more of a consci uh, he's more conscious of like well, being safe because you know he's, it he's makes been around sense. humans. He's been friends with humans. You know, so he's got he kind of has that kind of like um, that part of his brain that like, gets wired in a part of his brain. Well, Godzilla does it. Godzilla's just like, dude. Godzilla is me, shit. me fight, me fight, and you just see him and Godzilla just goes in charging, never stops. Godzilla's relentless. Gets pushed back, comes charging in again. Man, Godzilla doesn't give a shit. Bro, like I love oh, the man. whole. I love the whole like zero gravity battle yes that shit was so it looked, cool that reminded me of anime it looked very inspired oh, by anime dude 100 it was going and it looked really good too it was it was just badass yeah there's like a scene where like the, the ice dragon just like ice blasts godzilla a bit but mothra's like boom and just like ice dragon gets disoriented and godzilla's like like the thing was like slightly frozen defrosts cracks out of the ice and boom it slams into him I was just like, holy shit, dude. Godzilla's so cool. It went So hard. cool, man. Oh, dude, my God. Even just having Mothra come back was kind of sick. Yeah, it's I, nice that, to see Mothra back. That threw me off. I, in no shape or form, expected Mothra to come back. No, it was nice to see Mothra back. And they had this really cool shot of, like, Mothra, King Kong, and Godzilla together just, like, doing their cries. And I think in the film, you're like, wow, this is just kind of like the Avengers or something yeah. like that. But it was a really good shot. The monsters was, assembled. The monsters assembled. It was really cool. I thought that shot was sick as hell. Yep. Even King Kong versus Godzilla in, in in Cairo, in Egypt, with the pyramids. And then Godzilla just suplexes King Kong. Dude, that was oh sick. My that God. was sick. That was Dude, sick. I'm telling you, this movie is... Like, guys, when you're taking Godzilla minus one and you're comparing it to Godzilla x Kong, it's hard to compare because... They're focusing on vastly different things. They're presenting us different things. While and, and here's the one, thing, though. They're hmm. both doing it absolutely perfectly. Yes, they're doing what they want to do perfectly. All right, Godzilla Minus One wants to make Godzilla a true monster, a true terrifying horror. Does it perfectly with a character piece in the middle with it. Very great. It's a great combination. And then Godzilla X Kong's just like, we want to see monsters beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. And it does it so Dude, goddamn well. The choreography, the amount of fights. Yes. The amount of times you see the monster's full body, everything. Yes. Dude, it is like coming from where they started off with the very first Godzilla film where they just blew ball the shit out of you to what it is now. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. It's like heaven, man. I it, absolutely love it's, everything. Like, it's just, here's the thing. It's not going to be like the cinematic masterpiece, this thing that's talked about all of history. But, dude, it is so damn entertaining and fun. And these are the yes. these are the two core principles when it comes to, like, if seeing a movie. And this is why they, they did well at the box office. You're sitting yeah. in your chair. You're looking at this big-ass screen. And you're watching that. You're like, holy shit. Yep. This is awesome. Yes, sir. That's the... God damn. Godzilla. Godzilla as a franchise, as a whole, all right, is insanely good. All right? And it's, versatile. It's 70 years of Godzilla, and it's never been dull. All right? Every time we get Godzilla, we're getting peak. All right? Godzilla minus mm. one, and then Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Yes, they're both incredibly different, but they're so entertaining in different ways, and they both serve their purpose perfectly. All right? I yep. hate when people are just like, Godzilla minus one is better, blah, blah, blah. No. They're, no. It's not better. They're both just as good in different ways. Yep. It's about what is entertaining. It doesn't have to be peak. Well, it doesn't have to be like a a, a masterpiece. Like Godzilla minus one is masterpiece material. I think it's yeah, really good. it's just fantastic. Godzilla X Kong isn't because it has some parts of in terms of with the humans that yeah. I feel like is just lackluster. It's a little like drawn out and lackluster, but what it does right is perfected, and it's just like 
I love it so much. There's a reason why it did so well at the box office. Both movies bro. did well in the box office yeah. for a reason. Like Godzilla is doing very well, and I I'm happy because we're gonna get more dude, monsters, it's, more Godzilla creatures. Dude, I swear to God, I like. I heard a they, I saw an interview where uh, a, a director who would tackle it or something said that he would bring in Destroya. Oh, can you imagine a modern design of Destroya? Yes. Holy shit! Yes. That would be cool. There's many monsters that need modern designs. Yeah. Gigan. Gigan's the one I want to see the oh most. Oh my god! Just I think, the I think, buzzsaw, the buzzsaw yo, belly yo, in the dude, scythe hands. You know what? Yeah, get laser to, eyes. Get to those more like aliens. Bring on the yeah. aliens. Something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more like out there. My favorite, like of course, Me I think it's his Megalon. Megalon. I think Megalon. Mega. I don't know. Mega but he's like the giant insect with the like the the, the drill hands. The drill hands. Yeah, I love him. Bring oh, on Megalon god. and Gigan. Bro, I will be screaming like a little girl. I'll be right? so excited. I will oh my lose god. my goddamn mind screaming like a little girl at a Taylor Swift concert, man. I'm telling you, all right? <laughs> That's dude, my Taylor Swift concert. Dude, right Godzilla's there. my Taylor Swift. Yeah, 100%, man. I will lose my shit. Oh, dude. It's just, I'm very That's passionate. What I need. We're very passionate about Godzilla because, like, as kids, we watched we, a lot of the old films. Actually, no. I didn't watch too much of the films. We played the games. Oh, you're right. That was it. I, we, I only film I actually watched was. Um, was just was King of the Monsters the original? Yes, uh, we saw that. We, we watched the original King of the Monsters, but most of our Godzilla like, uh, we became Godzilla fans more so from the video Dude, games. Godzilla just like destroys all monsters. Yes, we yeah. played the shit out of Godzilla oh, games. Bro. There's even like another game called Destroy All Monsters or something like that. I can't remember where it was just like it wasn't Godzilla, but it was like it's people made their own game with giant monsters as well. Yep. We've always been a big fan of... I think it was on PlayStation 2. Something like that. We've always been a big fan of monsters beating the shit out of each other in the city. Yeah. It's so goddamn sick. You know what I'm waiting for? Mm. I'm waiting for a fighting game with giant monsters instead of the characters. Like a true fighting game. Yeah, like think about Street Fighter 6 but with monsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know? Give it to us. Or even like something or like... Or like Tekken. Tekken. Something Ooh. more more 3D. Or Ooh. if you want to go crazy, dude, just go like... Like Marvel versus Capcom with monsters. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. And they have all of their unique set abilities and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you could have cool some crazy moves. Yeah. Or add some very interesting monsters. I'm, I'm telling you, there, there, there is there's an untapped, there's an untapped gem in the monsters <laughs> in the monster <laughs> fighting genre for video Woo! games. We need it back. I would be right. so we thrilled. Need it, I would love the shit or out of that. Or just give me a Destroy All Monsters remake. I'll be happy with that too. I don't give a shit what it is. Yeah, from the ground up, like I totally remade like, from the ground up, not oh. some remastered bullshit. No, give me a cool blown up remake. Give remake. me a sequel. Yeah, or sequel, man. Godzilla destroys even more monsters. It wasn't all of them, not yet. <laughs> no, damn, <laughs> I'll Godzilla be, destroys I'll be, more monsters. More monsters. That'd be such a funny yeah, title. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'll be so into it, man. I'll be like, ah, ah, have so much oh, fun. Dude. But yeah, both these movies or phenomenal films and i would recommend anybody to go see them 100 i'm just gonna say man it's so good to be godzilla fan we're eating good as godzilla fans you're eating good right now but like i'm telling right? you man the, what we're eating right now is just absurdly delicious Dude, they're keeps they, they it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet bro you, you know, know it is? it's an all-you-can-eat buffet of filet mignon and it just never stops and you're like oh. guys how can you uh, how can you afford this and like don't worry about it keep eating buddy all right, <laughs> don't mind me. You know, I, I ain't paying. <laughs> I ain't paying. <laughs> you no, know, it's great. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I think that's it though for the films. Like, there's not much more to say. No. And uh, you know, it's easy to just say, oh, "Okay, let's compare it to what was better no. than the other." I can't um, do I, it. I refuse to I, do both it. Both of the, I had so much fun watching these films. Yeah. I can't compare. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla X Kong though is definitely the best of the legendary pictures monsterverse films 100 percent. it's the best they're doing they, they, it's getting better they're they're, they're they're learning they're slowly and clearly going in the best direction possible yes, they're figuring it out and i'm loving what they're humanity to the back monsters to the front like just, the just the amount of monsters we got too yeah yeah like oh god yeah. i could go on all day like, i'm so they hyped. know what we want and they're doing exactly what we want and yeah i just like that's it you know what? it doesn't have to, again it doesn't have to be a character piece like godzilla minus one no why because we already have Godzilla minus one uh, potential sequel. Let them do that. Legendary Pictures, do what you're doing good and stick to it and make it even better. That's what you do, all right? Don't try to be something that you're not, no. you know? Don't give us hot dogs when we want hamburgers, please, all right? <laughs> Again, yeah. I'm enjoying it. It's really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's about it for Godzilla, uh, for the Godzilla films yeah. uh, for this week. We're sure, um, I guess, questions. Do you want to go to the questions and highlights or do you want to talk about Smiling Friends a bit? I think uh, we're going to talk about Smiling Friends. We could briefly this touch This is the on. last podcast. <clears throat> Screw it. We're going a bit. We're going to okay. go and touch uh, Smiling Friends a little bit. Smiling Friends is something that we did for fun, and yeah. we never planned to upload it too soon. But since we were having so much problems with copyright, I did it in like a day. Yeah. I, I, I edited the whole season and posted it because I, I, I didn't care if it got any views. That was for us. We loved doing it. 
it's yeah. right up our alley. And we also felt bad that we were having copyright issues and we wouldn't have a video up on Friday. We yep. felt bad about that. And we're like, you know what? You know, like, you guys do so much for us. Yep. You know, and it's just like, I felt like that would just I couldn't, be like... I, I couldn't sit by like, and, ex and have nothing like, Honestly, like, it just, it felt bad. Yep. Like, we felt horrible, you know? You guys support us and stuff like that. The least we could do is stick to a schedule and give you guys content. You know, give you, give yep. you what you subscribe for. Yeah. You know? And so, he did that. He did it, like, one day... Boom, slammed it out, and yeah. it seems like you guys are enjoying it. And you know what? Uh, depending on how well, like, you know, I mean, it's I don't doing care. Well. I'm doing season we're, two. We're going to be doing season two, and we're going to do season two the same way. We're going to do it like in a big bulk. Once I, the last episode airs, we're just doing the whole thing in one shot, and I'm going to upload the whole season again. Yeah, we think it's so much fun because the, the episodes are super short. Yeah. It's so much more fun. I guarantee like, for you guys. How could you also, like, make enough content to really, like, make it transformative to do of a 10 minute video clip like that yeah and kind of like expand it yeah I, I, I just i feel like there's no, no point into it no and i know like i i, I uh, it'd be too short it would be too short it's just it's weird so we'd rather just give you guys the whole season it's i think it's a more fun for you guys yeah. to just watch you don't have to wait till next week you just get the whole thing in just front of you here you go enjoy scroll to your favorite episodes or the, the favorite parts you don't have to watch it all kind of thing yeah. it's just it's more like it's more so for your enjoyment and more so uh for your um yeah, you get to choose how you enjoy our content, yeah, and essentially. Personally, we love Smiling Friends. Yeah, huge fan of Smiling Friends. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the guys who made it. I, can't I think the that one guy's name was Psychic Pebbles or YouTube oh, or that's something. Oh, that's his YouTube. That's his, like, YouTube Yeah, I don't name. remember his name. I don't remember their actual names, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't dude, look it up. I've, I've, I've seen their work here and there, and I loved it. And the fact that, like, they got to make a show, like, big, big ups to Adult Swim for giving them that chance. Yeah. And, like, them nailing it, too. Like, I love everything about the show. The humor is so up my alley. Humor's spot on. I love the... I like the The art. characters are I amazing, I too. I like the character design. I like the art style. It's very simple, but it's very good. I like how they're even, like, so creative and go out of their way to, to mesh different art styles. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's just... It's fascinating. It's so, or like... Or even different forms of animation, yeah. you know? Also. It's so chaotic, but it's so, like... It, it just works for it, what they're delivering. Yeah, it's just... It's very good. I love it, man. Yeah. I, I swear, like, I, I still... There's so many of the episodes I, I think about vividly, like, specifically um, Shrimp's Odyssey. Shrimp's Odyssey is, is a phenomenal one. Here's the thing. There's so many episodes... Or even, like, uh, what's it called? Devin's Big Day? Or Desmond. Something. Desmond's Big Day. Episode 1, uh, Episode 3, the shrimp one's very good. I liked 4, the Halloween one, the ending, with when they beat the shit out of the... Uh, the, the tree monster for me having blackface yeah that oh, was so that, funny that the punchline to that episode was so goddamn good and worth it's like worth a, it, it was literally like a 10 minute joke because it starts off with charlie just straight up saying hey man i'm not wearing a costume people get canceled over costumes all the time you know like they get it in was trouble literally a 10 minute 10 minute ride to get to the punchline to, to prove his point yeah it's just 10 out of 10 it's that's so funny honestly it's very good uh storytelling or writing you know very good with that one i also like the uh the fantasy one where they oh, the Enchanted Force. The Enchanted Force was like a, kind of like D and D, Lord of the Rings kind of vibes kind of thing. Yeah, uh, with that, aliens. That was really a mix of aliens. Uh, that was really good. Or even, even like, like when, Charlie uh, going to hell. Charlie going to hell was a phenomenal episode. I already punches that little guy. Goes. Ugh! Oh yeah. Dude, that scene was like, oh, it's so good. Very good. Because I love he's like, he's like, if you do that again, I'm gonna punch you, man. I'm telling you. And he did it. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, the last episode was very interesting. It was like, they go to Brazil and it's a huge <laughs> argument, and they ended up not. Technically, they were in Brazil, but they never got to explore Brazil. Literally nothing happened, and I loved that yeah. so much. It, it was just like... It felt very real. I felt like that was like... Uh, I, I genuinely believe that the, was a true experience. Like, that was... This them. happened before. Yes. This was based off of something real. It was based on a true story that they experienced. It felt way too real, and I felt like any... I felt like I could have been in a situation like this if I went on a trip with friends or something I could like have that. done that. It was very, like, scary how realistic it was. Yeah. That was really great. I think Smiling Friends as a whole is very good. If you guys have not seen Smiling Friends... Please watch it. Go watch Smiling Friends. Support the creators. They deserve all the support. These guys are, like... They're some of the best in the game right now, all yeah. right? They're the, like, some of the funniest guys making some of the greatest uh, cartoons, I guess, if you want to put it. Like, they're just good at what they do, and I feel like I want to see them make more. I know that they got confirmed for a season three already. Thank God. I'm very happy. I want this to go on until it's just, like... Here's the thing. I could see this going on like Rick and Morty, except not getting exhausting and tiring. Exactly that. Exactly. I feel like the reason why it's not exhausting and tiring is the 10 minute episodes. Yep. Very short, very compact. And all, and it's just like in nothing. There's no like overarching story. It's literally all over the place. There's a different story every time. The only time where it was was episode eight when Charlie and Pim are arguing. Well, no, but bringing up past the things that happened. No, but that's episodes. the thing. Like it, but for the most there's, part, a, there's a payoff. 
that they will talk about what happened previously. But it's not required for you to, to actually like. You don't uh, really enjoy have, to, but to really enjoy them point by point, you can just watch them in any order, and you're basically getting a different story. Yeah, and that's 100%. fun. You're right. Yeah, and it, again, it's just like it's very good. I like the way they do things. Yeah, even like the murder mystery of uh, Mr. Salty. Yeah, it's you know, it's just funny. like they put a, like a random who done it. It's like yeah. they all did it. I love that they all did it, but they all didn't do it. It's just it's clever. It's so stupidly clever. Yeah. So yeah, guys, if, uh, you support Smiling Friends. You yeah, know, please they're do. Really great guys. I mean, if if I had a dream, I would love the voice of character in Smiling Friends. I would. It, oh god. It, it, it literally suits how obnoxious and loud we are. I think we could yeah. do very well in there. There's a lot of obnoxious and loud characters. In there. I I swear to God, I could play Desmond. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, you would I make could, a great Desmond. Maybe you should cosplay as Desmond. If I shaved my beard, I could be Desmond. Yeah, just hold a revolver. I don't know if I could go to a convention like that. I think <laughs> it would be very questionable. It's like you know, it's like I swear to God, this is a, you know it's a costume. Funny, it'd be funny. You just go, you, you go there and you cosplay, and you literally have uh, Kyle as Pim, me as Charlie, you as Desmond. Could be Charlie as well. I think I have the physique. You have a Charlie look about you, honestly. If you were, I like, do. if you were like, you know, what was weird. If you were, I like, hated, if you were I, Simpson yellow, yeah. But I hated the fact that I truly identified with Charlie. I was like, man. Oh I'm yeah, a, it's kind of sad how like. I was like, wow, I'm such a piece of shit. Yeah. I realized quickly, especially the Christmas episode. I'm like, yeah, I'm Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Charlie, 100. percent That was so funny. Kyle reminds me of Pim. Yeah, Kyle's Pim. Kyle's Pim, 100. percent yeah. yeah. What's Brandon? Could Brandon be Desmond? <laughs> yeah, Brendan's Desmond. Yeah, I like that so You could be better. Alan. Alan? Get my cheese. Oh, yeah, I'll be Alan. I I'm okay with Alan. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I'll be Alan. Sure. <laughs> Desmond. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really oh, good. Oh, dude. But yeah, guys, Smiling Friends was incredible. If you haven't seen the videos, uh, if you haven't seen the video, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, if you've not seen Smiling Friends, go check it out. And then, you know, you can go check out our video afterwards. Or watch it with us. Whatever you want to do, I don't really care. No, you do. Enjoy you... content the way you want to. I don't give a shit. Yeah, do. don't listen to us. Do whatever the hell you want. Do whatever the hell you want. Uh, that's about it. Uh, we're gonna move on to questions and the highlights. The last questions. Last questions and highlights. We got a few here. We got a few here, guys. All right, all right. I'm going in. I'm going all right. in. All right, I'm going in. I'm going in. Uh, you uh, said them, right? Yes, I did. Right oh, there, buddy. Yep, they're right here. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we got from 32 Inked. Sick. If you could sit down and have dinner with any movie character, who would it be, and what are you having for dinner, dessert, and drinks? Am I wrong for thinking there is a steak involved? No, there's no steak. I would not invite a character <sighs> for steak. Sit down with any movie character, who would it be? That's very complex. Like, there's so many great characters in film that would be interesting to sit down with. Uh, we, uh, okay, I already know my answer. I'll give you some time to think, though. No, you go first. Okay, yeah. uh, I would have dinner with Stifler, and for dinner, we're having your mom. <laughs> no, for dinner, no, dessert should be mom. We're not going to dessert. Oh, we're, we're just going for the mom. full meal? We're just sticking to mom. Mom's, Woo! mom's not a dessert. Mom's a meal. Hey, yo! That's it, baby. Um, for me character in, in the film i could sit down and eat a meal you know what i'm probably just gonna sit back have a good couple of french fries with radio <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the uh, cuban good and junior classic radio. i'm gonna hang out with radio we're gonna yeah. have a good time talk about football push uh carts around push grocery carts around sounds yeah. like a great time all right i've been having fun with that all right well, there you go there's your answers enjoy for whatever the hell that is all right next one comes from breeze evie breeze so the last one, someone asked her favorite dinosaur. My, this is it. The Sauralophus is what Ducky is in The Land Before Time. Yeah. But there's also a Parasaurolophus. I think I said that right. That are cute and duck-like. Get ducked. But those are the names of the dinosaurs that I was talking about. The so Sauralophus? Yeah, it's like a weird duck-looking creature with the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The weird horseshoe head. Oh, that's... That's yeah. the Sauralophus and the Parasaurolophus. Dude, I'll be Sorla real with you. Videos. If I had to really think about it, I would have never come to the name Sorla Office. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's honestly, it's. A, I blame uh, paleontologists. Screw all you assholes. All right. My favorite dinosaur has one of the weirdest ass names that it's hard to remember. Like, just do better next time. Why can't we just call him like Billhead? Why can't we go the Duckosaurus or something like that? Or, Duck uh, Billhead. Duck Billosaurus or something like that. Can't you make it simple? Quackosaurus, you know? <laughs> Quackosaurus. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Quackalophus or whatever. I don't know. Thank you for educating us, idiots. Thank you for educating us. All right, on to the next one, which comes from dude. Cardi it Jefferson. wouldn't be it wouldn't be a final podcast. A without, finale. A finale without Cardi Jefferson one four two seven. All right, this guy's been around forever. Do you want me to read it? Hell yeah, gentlemen. And I use that term loosely, as you, you should, as you should. Thank you. I loved Rick Marina's films. I can't wait until October, so y'all can react to a little shop of horrors. But question time, Chris. 
Who is your favorite character, actor, and Curtis? If you were in a Rocky movie, as Rocky, which Rocky opponent would you like to box and why? <laughs> Woo! That's a good. That's a do the shirt. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, you go yeah. first. You go first. Me go first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going straight for Drago. I'm going for Drago. It's personal, baby. It's personal. I'm going straight for Drago. I'm gonna beat the shit out of him, man. That's it. I'm gonna beat the shit out of him again. That's it. I'm gonna go for the biggest and toughest villain in all of Rocky history. I'm yep. going for Drago. Either that or cancer. Because I mean Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> cancer. Yeah, and Creed. Holy shit, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that hey man, that was a nice one. Thanks, man. Uh, my favorite character actor, I'm getting very specific when it comes to the term character. It's Andy Circus. Mm. Andy Circus does something <laughs> fascinating that most actors I don't even think could even attempt to do. The way he plays like general like creatures, characters is fascinating. It's interesting how he brings life to creatures. Yep, yeah, Gollum, Smeagol, even like Caesar. Andy is just a master at what he does, and I don't think there's a talent that kind of like matches his uh, energy towards those he, kind he's of. He's kind roles. of like a, a, he's like uh, he's literally unique. He's I know I know what you were saying though, like a character actor, someone who plays different ca like characters, oh, and really you're, like you're spot on. It really like gets into the role, I think, like Daniel Day Lewis and stuff like that. But for me, it's Andy. I think Andy Serkis is just in a realm of his own, and he is not even rivaled by anybody with what he does. One hundred percent. He is just so good. I absolutely love. When he's in anything, because yeah. not only is he good at playing these creatures, he's a fantastic damn actor in general. He really is. I honestly, I really like him a lot. So uh, yeah, yeah, good answer actually. All right, next one. Let's go to the next one. All right. Um, is that is the? It, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, I got the right one. Is, okay. Kid, this is from Curtis Fabian, three thousand nine hundred. Bros named Curtis as well, so I felt like it was uh, it was right to highlight them. Hello from the Philippines. Hello Philippines. Hello Philippines. Hello Philippines. Hello, we love you guys. We love you guys from the Philippines. Yeah. All right, next one. Maybe we'll do a uh, Octocrew goes to the Philippines, and then we just end up in the airport and go home. Sounds like a great time. Let me know how the airports are in the Philippines. Uh, this one comes from Eduardo Lima. This is of our course. editor. Of course. Of course. Our editor. He, he has, has to be in the finale. He's got to be. He's got to be here. Yep. Have you ever had a childhood crush or on a celebrity or character from a movie, game, or etc.? I have never had a childhood, uh, childhood crush on a celebrity or a real woman. Never have I. It's always been Tifa from Final Fantasy VII and Chun Li from Street Fighter. <gasps> I'm just saying. Those are that has always been my childhood crush, and it's never changed. I still crush on them. All right. I feel like those they, are good. Those are absolutely... beautiful women. Beautiful women. That's it. Um, so no real women, not on this guy. I'm a very, uh, I'm, uh, I have, uh, I have class. I have culture. I honestly, I don't really know. Like when I, th like when I'm put into a corner and I have to think about this, no actual character comes to mind instantly. Mine's fast, dude. I, I don't know why. Like I really don't feel like I have any like dark hair, dark eyes, workout. That's it. That's all I need. Respectable. Yeah, I'm a very simple guy. I'm trying to think about it, man, but like I don't think I've got one. One that comes to mind so quickly. Maybe there was one if I look at the deepest, darkest pits of my brain cells. But, bro, like, nothing's coming to my mind. Nothing. Chris has nothing. Should we move on? Uh, Can you find anything? I'm trying to think of games with characters. Like, I, I don't have a childhood if it's this, one. If it's this difficult, man, I think I'll just, just got skip none. it, man. Screw that. Skip. This is pointless for me. I'm we done. already answered this previously. What's a monster or titan in the Godzilla lore that you wish appears in next movies? Gigan and him. Megalon. Megalon. Gigan and Megalon. Together. The fight King Kong and Godzilla. Gigan and Megalon. That'd be sick. I'd be down with that. Yeah. Uh, what skills do you still want to acquire in your life? Uh, I would like to learn another language. Uh, I would like to learn how to read. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, but seriously, <laughs> I, I can like, read. Another language i think would be really fun uh, what else is there that i would like to oh a skill to acquire oh for me uh is there a squ skill i would still like to require um i don't know uh i would like to acquire the skill of swordsmanship oh really yeah i don't know will i ever need it not in modern society would it look cool yeah probably i like a great sword kind of like uh, guts from berserk or like cloud from final fantasy i would oh. like to wield a great sword Dude, that would be... You're going to have to train hard for that, That's man. That's a skill I'd like to learn. You know, some guy tries to mug me in an alleyway, and I'm just like, hold up, give me a second, and I just pull out this giant sword. <laughs> or like a giant club and beat the shit out of him. literally just tear him in half. Yeah. Like, wow! <laughs> Get out of here! 
of here! Yeah. I can barely swing in the alleyway. <laughs> you just take down the building with it. Yeah, I have to like go up from overhead to yeah. take them out. Yeah, <laughs> just right down the middle. Yeah, like where's it gonna go? We're in a narrow alleyway. You're screwed, buddy. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So yeah, uh, great swordsmanship, and maybe another language, or maybe I would also like an instrument, but I don't think I have the potential for instruments. Anybody does. I don't. Anybody does. All you got to do is uh, just gotta put work into it, man. Just yeah. like anything else. That's tough. Anyways, uh, we're gonna move on. Awesome. To next. We're gonna go to the next uh, highlight. Thank you, Eduardo. We love you. Thank you, Eduardo. This one comes from Samuel Samuela Brantes, A206. Your YouTube are my favorite YouTube reaction. Love you, love you guys. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was kind of funny. That's really sweet. Thank you, Samuel. We appreciate that. We are YouTube. We are YouTube, and we love you, love you too. <laughs> we love you. We love you. All right, the next one comes from... Uh, Zavius World? I probably screwed that up. Zavi's World. Zavi's World. Again, might butcher that, but uh, hey, Chris and Curtis, you both might do a reaction to a goofy movie. This film looks a lot like uh, Toy Story. Uh, I saw this one, and I just wanted to say that we've seen a goofy movie before. It's actually one of my favorite it, Disney films. Goofy movie is my favorite, top, top, top favorite, number one spot Disney film of all time. It's Nothing really beats good. a goofy movie. I love it so much, so unfortunately, you're never going to see that on the channel. No. Even I've the, seen, you've even seen the sequel. I've seen the sequel already. Yeah. I love the movie a lot. Uh, Again, like, goofy movie is kind of like the pinnacle of when Disney was really great at making their films. The storytelling. It, it The storytelling is just the, the, 10 out of 10. The, the storytelling, the themes that are presented in that film are so goddamn good. The movie's aged incredibly well. Oh, so it's a movie that you watch as a kid. Then you watch it as an adult, and you get a whole brand new yeah, appreciation. Yeah, as a kid, you have the perspective of Max, and as an adult, you have the perspective of Goofy. You, you totally understand Goofy's perspective, and then once you do, you're like, wow, that's like, yeah. It's, again, oh. it's a movie that has aged like fine wine, and, and and if you've not seen it, you have to go watch it. A Goofy movie is when Disney was good at one point. I know it's hard to believe, based on what they've been doing recently. Oh, God. They've been destroying everything, man. I don't even think we could blame Disney as a... Well, maybe we can. I will blame Disney. I don't know, man. I just think the writers that they're getting and the stories that they're, they're honestly, kind of going for I are honestly just so dumb. think they should just fire every writer they have and just get some, like, fresh faces or something like that because it's just, like, clearly they don't know what they're doing anymore. The, like, peop the people they're constantly hiring are just not talented no they have no ounce of creativity not at all and they're just going for very cookie cutter boring nonsensical stories that have no relatable characters yeah. no relatable themes just bullshit yeah it's very unfortunate sadly uh, but as you guys can hear adwin's kind of having a rough time so we're near the end anyway so we're, like, we're it's at done. the end right now this is the end of the octopod uh podcast as a whole season one season one for now uh, yep. We might bring her back when we actually have a better idea of where we want to take it and how we want to present it to you guys. Yeah. Or make it more entertaining for you guys. Yep. Uh, until then, uh, we've got nothing else. Uh, so if you want, the secret emoji this time is uh, a gravestone. Tombstone. Tombstone emoji, gravestone emoji. Yeah, just uh, give us well wishes. Uh, well wishes, rest in peace. Memorials. Give you us know. memorials in the comments down below. Give us some ideas of how would you like the Octopod to become. Or to what would you like us to talk about? What would you like us to do? How would you like the Octo Cruel uh, podcast? Even like saying, hey, maybe just bring on some a lot of guests and etc. Just give us some general ideas. Yeah, give us some general ideas to work with, and we're good. again give us criticism, constructive criticism. Don't yeah. just say I hate that guy because he's fat. That doesn't work for us. All right, that's not constructive criticism. Honestly, I think it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Or but I hate that guy because he's small and annoying. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Give us some constructive criticism that we could actually use to make the podcast better or to bring it into a, a better direction for you guys, something more entertaining for you guys. Yeah. So on that note, we're gonna peace on out, guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being around for all of you, for all of those of you who have watched the Octopod, listened to the Octopod. We appreciate you guys very much. Love I would you. love to bring it back for you guys when we have a better idea of things. So we'll potentially see you in the next one. No promises. We might be permanently dead. So uh, see you guys. Bye. Bye. See you in our reactions. Wow.